Okay, so I'm weird about coincidences. Like, if I have a dream where it rains, and then the next day, it rains, I am totally the type of person to immediately conclude that I must be psychic. And I'm not psychic. And I know this. I know it's just a coincidence. But that's how I respond to coincidences. That's how a lot of people respond to coincidences. They don't feel natural. They're not satisfying. It feels like there has to be a better explanation. Today, I want to talk about the hierarchy problem. It's one of the most infamous problems in particle physics, and it has to do with the mass of the Higgs boson. Why would that be something that keeps theoretical physicists up late at night? It's because it boils down to a spectacular coincidence. You might remember the Higgs boson from its starring role in the 2013 Nobel Prize for Physics. You might have heard it called the God Particle, or that it controls all the mass in the universe. But we don't need to worry too much about what the Higgs does. What's important here is its own mass. The Higgs kind of has two masses. There's a bare mass that we can't ever see, and a corrected mass that we can actually measure. Think of the Higgs like this frozen burrito. All on its own, it has some bare temperature, frozen. But when I get hungry and put it in the oven, the air molecules in the oven hit the burrito and make it get hotter. And then later, when I take the burrito out of the oven and measure its temperature with my mouth, it's a lot hotter than it used to be. Its temperature has received corrections from the ambient thermal energy of the oven. The Higgs mass is like that. It receives corrections from the ambient quantum energy of the universe, which I know sounds like some new age quantum healing nonsense, but just like, stick with me. There's a temperature to our quantum oven, a higher mass that the Higgs mass is drawn to. Now, really it's an energy because energy and mass are kind of interchangeable, but that energy, the temperature of our quantum oven has to do with the scope of the standard model. Let's talk about that while this is cooking. The standard model is a set of equations that describe the way the world works on the scale of elementary particles. For most macroscopic, everyday phenomena, we don't need the standard model. Classical physics gets the job done fine. You don't need to describe someone throwing a tennis ball in terms of electrons and quarks. But as you zoom in and go to smaller and smaller distances, which correspond to higher and higher energies, you start seeing these subatomic particles, and classical physics becomes inadequate. It's no longer able to describe what's going on. You need a new theory for the higher energy scale, something like the standard model. But as you go to even higher energies, the standard model also eventually breaks. We know it must break because it doesn't explain gravity. So at some very high energy, some other theory takes over. Now, finding out what that theory is is a tall order. It could be something like string theory. Nobody really knows. But because of the way quantum field theory works and math, it turns out that the Higgs mass is sensitive to that energy scale the energy scale where the standard model breaks down and some other theory takes over. So we could call that energy scale the temperature of our quantum oven. Okay, now this is the weird part. The energy scale where we expect the standard model to break down is really, really high. The oven is super hot, and so the Higgs should be super heavy. And yet, it's not. The actual observed mass for the Higgs boson is many, many orders of magnitude lighter than the mass the oven wants it to be. It's like if I took this burrito out of the oven and somehow it were still cold. How could that possibly happen? Remember that the Higgs has bare mass, and what we're measuring is the bare mass plus the correction it receives from the oven. What I'm saying is that the correction is really, really high, but somehow the mass we measure isn't all that high. So we say the bare mass must be canceling out most of the correction. And yes, that makes the bare mass a negative number, but we can't ever measure it anyway, so it's not a big deal, so just don't think about it, okay. This is the spooky part. For the Higgs to be as light as it is, these two numbers, the Higgs bare mass and the correction to the Higgs mass, which can't really talk to each other, have to just happen to cancel out, like, to a 99.9999999999 degree of accuracy. Okay, so summarize a little bit. The Higgs is affected by a quantum oven, which makes its mass sensitive to the energy scale where the standard model breaks down, which is really, really high. Somehow, the Higgs mass isn't actually all that high. That suggests that there's this extraordinary, unthinkably unlikely coincidence where the Higgs bare mass 
just happens to almost perfectly cancel with an enormous correction to its mass. Just to emphasize how crazy this coincidence is, it is as mathematically delicate as balancing a pencil on its tip. If that pencil is the length of the entire solar system. It's an extremely uncomfortable coincidence, and so physicists are trying really hard to find a way to explain it. Probably the most popular solution to the hierarchy problem is called supersymmetry. In supersymmetry, every particle has a super partner sparticle, and this symmetry shields the Higgs from enormous mass corrections. It's sort of like if all the air molecules in the oven were somehow wired to bump into each other instead of the burrito. So the burrito would never heat up. In supersymmetry, the temperature of the quantum oven no longer has much effect on the mass of the Higgs boson, so the coincidence is gone. Supersymmetry is popular for a lot of reasons. It's a beautiful theory with a lot of really nice properties, including this handy solution to the hierarchy problem. Supersymmetry could also help unify the fundamental forces and even explain dark matter. Unfortunately, it has one major weakness that's kind of hard to get around. Complete lack of evidence. The LHC, the world's largest particle accelerator, is powerful enough that it definitely should be able to see the superpartner particles predicted by supersymmetry, and yet... The LHC's non-discovery of supersymmetry is probably the biggest result in modern experimental physics that never reached the public eye. Because non-discoveries aren't sexy. And all hope isn't completely lost on supersymmetry, there's still some altered versions of the theory that are still maybe viable, but it isn't the clean, hopeful solution to the hierarchy problem it once was. And so, many physicists are exploring other options. Some people think they can explain the hierarchy problem with extraspatial dimensions, or by saying the Higgs isn't actually an elementary particle and is actually composed of smaller constituents. But the hierarchy problem isn't the hotbed of research it used to be. A couple decades ago, it was the thing in particle physics, and now people are kind of moving on. There's still hope that we'll find and experimentally verify a solution that explains away this bizarre coincidence. But maybe we're also learning to accept the possibility that we might not. The content in this video is largely based on an excellent blog post by Flip Tenedo and an essay by G.F. Giudice. I've put links to both in the description and I really highly recommend reading them if you found this video interesting. I also want to give a quick shout out to my professor, Prof. Shuve, who very patiently explained a lot of these concepts to me. And of course, Thank you for watching.